welcome back to another video of where Cherry spent too much money on books. This has become an annual thing in January. That is the time where I buy my books for the year. Now I'm sure you're thinking, Cherry, did you read all of the books that you bought last year? No, but I am making good progress. Last year I kept to my reading habits. I'm reading every day where I can. As long as I'm keeping up with my habit, I do not mind purchasing more books. I keep falling in to book talk and book Instagram and book threads and everywhere you talk about books I'm getting influenced. I'm going to tell you all the books that are on this year's TBR and the ones that I've bought. I will read the blurbs in case they sound interesting to any of you but let's get to it and hey if you are brand new here firstly hello welcome don't forget that you can click the subscribe button if you'd like to become part of our weird magical online family that loves books apparently. Let's go. Let's start off with some Sarah J Mass. I have finished nearly the Akatar series, but I I don't want a life where I'm not reading a Sarah J Mass book. So I have decided to commit myself to Throne of Glass. I think this is uh, her chunkiest series. I think there's like eight books in this series. Uh, don't quote me. Oh, they're all on the back. Look at that. Yes, there's eight. So now I'm a little bit concerned because this has them in a different order. There is a lot of videos about the way that you should read these books, but hey ho. In a land without magic, an assassin is summoned to the castle. She has no love for the vicious king who rules from his throne of glass, but she has not come to kill him. She has come to win her freedom. If she defeats 23 murderers, thieves and warriors in a competition, she will be released from prison to serve as the king's champion. Her name is Sel... Oh God, why, why do you do this to me? Her name is Selena... Sod Sardathian? Look, I'm new to this character. The crown prince will provoke her, the captain of the guard will protect her, and the princess from a far away country will befriend her. But something rotten dwells in the castle and it's there to kill. When her competitors start dying mysteriously one by one, Selena's fight for freedom becomes a fight for survival and a desperate quest to root out the evil before it destroys her world. So throne of glass. <laughs> Do not give me any spoilers, please. I do think that I'm going to have a little bit of a Sarah J Mass break, but I'm very, very excited about this. Okay, I'm not even going to save the one that I'm most excited till, till last, but fourth wing, and not only fourth wing, I also bought Iron Flame. I have heard amazing things about this. Some of my friends have started this series and finished this series and said that they just want more and it's one of the best books that they've ever read. I think this might be the next series that I'm gonna start, unless I go into some autobiography, but this is high on my TBR. So let's just go through the blurb of Fourth Wing, which is the first of these two books. There is only two at the moment. I think they're still being written. Welcome to the brutal and elite world of Basgith War College. I've probably butchered that word. 20-year-old Violet Sorengale was supposed to enter the Scribe Quadrant, living a quiet life amongst books and history. Now, the commanding general, her tough as Talon's mother, has ordered Violet to join the hundreds of candidates striving to become the elite of Naver Dragon Riders. But when you're smaller than everyone else and your body is brittle, death is only a heartbeat away because dragons don't bond to fragile humans. They incinerate them. Ooh. With fewer dragons willing to bond than cadets, most would kill Violet to better their own chances of success. The rest would kill her just for being her mother's daughter, like Zayden, the most powerful and ruthless wing leader in the Riders Quadrant. She'll need every edge her wits can give her just to see the next sunrise. Yet, with every day that passes, the war outside grows more deadly, the kingdom's protective wards are failing, and the death toll continues to rise. Even worse, Violet begins to suspect leadership is hiding a terrible se secret. Everyone at Bazgayeth has an agenda, so sleep with one eye open, because once you enter, there are only two ways out. Graduate or die. Oh my god. Yes, this sounds very, very, very much up my street. It's got some really good reviews. It actually says a wild, sexy roller coaster of her ride so that's making me think there might be a little bit of spice in there maybe it says fiercely romantic and unforgivably addictive sign me up if you've already read it let me know your feelings down below obviously spoiler free please 
let's move on. Next up is a book that was a little bit of a wild card for me. I haven't really looked at many reviews of this, but I do think that I heard about this from a TikTok video. I feel like everything that I've heard of now comes from TikTok. This is called The Invisible Life of Addy LaRue. Look at, look at it. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. It's even got a little built-in bookmark. It's just very beautiful. Oh my God, look at this. Beautiful artwork. Oh my gosh, there's more illustrations. Oh, I love that. So France, 1714, a desperate woman makes a desperate deal in the dark, a bargain to live forever, but to be remembered by none. So begins the invisible life of Addie LaRue. Shadow, muse to artists throughout history, forgotten friend, a confidant and lover, slipping away with the morning light, Addie passes through lives, desperate only to leave a trace of herself, until the day she walks back into a small bookshop in Manhattan and meets Henry, who remembers her. After 300 years, Addie's life is restarting, but the devil never plays fair. As Henry and Addie's lives start to intertwine, they must face the consequences of the decisions they've made and the prices to be paid. The invisible life of Addie LaRue is a dazzling adventure across centuries and continents, across history and art, about a young woman learning how far she will go to leave her mark on the world. So yeah, I felt like this was just a really interesting concept that I really liked that. I can't wait to read it. I can't say much else because um, <laughs> I haven't read it yet. Okay, so the next book. I loved the blurb, but you'll see why I thought the title of this book was clever. So here we have Bob Mortimer, The Satsuma Complex. It says Gary Thorne goes for a pint with a work acquaintance called Brendan. When Brendan leaves early, Gary meets a girl in the pub. He doesn't catch her name but falls for her anyway. After she leaves suddenly, all Gary has to remember her by is the book she was reading the Satsuma Complex. See what I mean about the title of the book being clever? Like the whole book is surrounding this book. But when Brendan goes missing, Gary needs to track down the girl he now calls Satsuma to get some answers. So a quest begins through the streets of South London and to finally bring some love and excitement into an unremarkable life. Just thought it sounded really interesting. Next is a book called The Diary of a CEO. I am hooked on Stephen Bartlett's podcast. If you do not know The Diary of a CEO, this is, it is a podcast. It's a whole brand now as well, but it's a podcast. He's been on tour with the podcast. He's been on Dragon's Den. Like he is an entrepreneur and a half. Now for someone that accidentally fell into the world of being a businesswoman, I am very interested in reading about businesses. Trust me, this sounds boring. It's not. Uh, this is a very popular book because Stephen himself is very popular but let's have a little read. This is not a book about business strategy. Thank God, because that wouldn't be for me. Strategy changes like the seasons. This book is about something much more permanent. At the very heart of all success and failures, I've been exposed to both my own entrepreneurial journey and through the thousands of interviews I've conducted on my podcast is a set of principles that can stand the test of time, apply to any industry and be used to anyone who's in search of building something great and becoming someone great. I love the sound of that. And it says these are the fundamental laws that will ensure excellence. They are rooted in psychology and behavioral science and are based on the wisdom of tens of thousands of people that I've surveyed across every continent and age group and of course drawn from the conversations that I've had on my chart topping podcast with the world's most successful people. Seriously if you have not ever watched an episode of Diary of a CEO I guarantee that he has got a guest that you will know and want to hear from. It's so interesting. Go check it out. As someone that has multiple businesses I've just started a new one in fact if you haven't heard about that then check out the description down below. I'm opening my own shop, something completely outside my comfort zone and cannot wait to get reading this because I want it to be a huge success. Okay, bit of a businessy one. It wasn't fiction, just threw that in there. Let's move back to fiction for a moment. We have got another book here, which I am equally as excited about. And this one is called Days at the Mori Saki Bookshop. Firstly, can we talk about how absolutely cute and precious the cover of this one is? It looks really warm and welcoming. This 
bookshop. I love the little kitty cat and the snow. Just looks really nice. So let's take a look at the blurb. A tale of family's love, new beginnings, and the comfort that can be found in books. From the beginning of summer to early spring, I lived at the Morisaki bookshop. I spent that period of my life in the spare room on the second floor of the store trying to bury myself in books. The cramped room barely got any light and everything felt damp. It smelled constantly of musty old books. But I will always remember the days I spent there because that's where my real life began. And I know without a doubt that if not for those days, the rest of my life would have been bland, monotonous, mono guys, you know I'm terrible at words. The Morisaki Bookshop is precious to me. It's a place that I will never forget. I'm looking forward to this. I think it'll be a nice cozy read. And speaking of cozy reads and potentially spicy reads, if I'm not mistaken, that will bring me on to the Pumpkin Spice Cafe. I think I'm going to save this one for autumn 2024 because the cover is screaming. It's screaming nice autumnal vibes. So here we have the Pumpkin Spice Cafe. It's the season to fall in love. And this is by Laurie Gilmore. Let's turn this over. When Jeannie's aunt gifts her the beloved Pumpkin Spice Cafe. Imagine being gifted a, just a cafe, like, here you go. Um, in the small town of Dream Harbor, Jeannie jumps at the chance for a fresh start away from her very dull desk job. Logan is a local farmer who avoids Dream Harbor's gossip at all costs, but Jeannie's arrival disrupts Logan's routine and he wants nothing to to do with the irritatingly upbeat new girl except that he finds himself inexplicit inexplicably inexplicably why can't I <laughs> help inexplicably drawn to her. We got there in the end. Will Jeannie's happy-go-lucky attitude win over the grumpy but gorgeous Logan, or has this city girl found the one person in town who won't fall for her charm or her pumpkin spice lattes? Look, I don't even like pumpkin spice lattes, but I just like the idea of a really easy read that's a soppy romance. I liked it. It's gonna be my October read, I think. I think I'm gonna plan it for then. Okay, we have got six books left. I promise I have not bought the entirety of Waterstones. At least I tried not to. Okay, next up is something that I've had my eye on for the past year but have not committed to buying. It's called Twisted Love. <laughs> I don't know if this is any good. It's a multi-million copy best-selling author though, so I feel like a lot of people may have read this. Alex Volkov is a devil blessed with the face of an angel and cursed with a past he can't escape. Driven by a tragedy that has haunted him for most of his life, his ruthless pursuits for success and vengeance leave little room for matters of the heart. When he's forced to look after his best friend's sister, he starts to feel something in his chest, a crack, a melt, a fire that could end his world as he knew it. This sounds so cheesy, I'm not gonna lie. Ava Chen is a free spirit trapped by nightmares of a childhood that she can't remember. But despite her broken past, she's never stopped seeing the beauty in the world, including the heart beneath the icy exterior of a man that she shouldn't want. Her brother's best friend, her neighbor, her savior, and her downfall. Theirs is a love that was never supposed to happen, but when it does, it unleashes secrets that could destroy them both and everything they hold dear. And as you can see, you can see the next one. So this twisted games, twisted hate, and twisted lies. I love, I love a romance. Is that what this is? I don't know, haven't read it yet, but this is the vibe I'm getting. I just like a nice, easy read, I think, maybe. We'll see, we'll see. Most of my books, I like to have romance in them. Speaking of which, that'll bring us on to the next book, Love the cover of this one. This is called If He Had Been With Me and this book is by an author called Laura Nowlin. If he had been with me, everything would have been different. Autumn and Finn used to be inseparable, but then something changed or they changed. Now they do their best to ignore each other. Autumn has her boyfriend, Jamie, and her close-knit group of friends. Finn has become that boy at school, the one that everyone wants to be around. That still doesn't stop the way Autumn feels every time she and Finn cross paths and the growing nagging thought that maybe things could have been different, maybe they should be together. And as time passes, Autumn realizes that she might not get another chance to make things right before it's too late. I bought it purely, purely the cover was nice. It's about romance and it's meant to be good. <laughs> Okay, we're diving away from the fiction path for a moment and we're going into more serious books. This is called The Power of Habit, Why We Do What We Do and How to Change. 
Now I bought this book because I really struggle with habit and I want to crack it. I'm constantly starting again but I know that it's quite hard to form a habit and to make them stick so I did buy this book in the hopes of a little bit of self-help. In The Power of Habit award-winning journalist Charles Duhigg takes us into the thrilling and surprising world and scientific studies of habits. He examines why some people and companies struggle to change despite years of trying whilst others seem to remake themselves overnight. He visits laboratories where neuroscientists explore how habits work and where exactly they reside in our brains. And he uncovers how the right habits were crucial to the success of Olympic swimmer Michael Phelps, Starbucks CEO Howard Schultz, Sh <laughs> and civil rights hero Martin Luther King Jr. The result is a compelling argument and an empowering discovery. The key to exercising regularly, losing weight, raising exceptional children, becoming more productive, or even building revolutionary companies is understanding how habits work. By harnessing this new science, we can transform our businesses, our communities, and our lives. I am just very interested in the science behind habits and I think this book is going to be an interesting read. It's not too long, I'm hoping it's not too heavy on the science, but at the same time I kind of want to know if reading this could help me apply some long-term habits in my own life. The next three books I didn't actually get in my Waterstones order. One I bought from Amazon and the other two I got for Christmas, but I thought that you may be interested in seeing them anyway as you are here enjoying this video. So this one I got from Amazon. This is by a TikTok creator called Anne Russell. You may know her. I feel like she's that kind of wholesome lady that every t turns up on everyone's For You page, like helping and how to clean things. Currently she's unfortunately going through some health issues, sad to hear, but I really wanted to support her so I bought her book. And coincidentally it's a book on a topic that I love. This is called How to Clean Everything, a practical down-to-earth guide for anyone who doesn't know where to start. She's gonna know some cleaning hacks which I do not. And I just can't wait to dive into this. I feel like this is a book that you can just pick up and dive into any little part of it. It says, from everyone's favorite online cleaning expert and TikTok auntie, this is the only cleaning book that you will ever need. How to Clean Everything is full of genuinely useful tips and tricks and advice about not just what, but also what not to do. Covering everything from laundry to accidents to cleaning room by room, this book also contains sections on more general household maintenance, particularly useful for renters or anyone living away from home for the first time. Anne's approach is realistic, reassuring, and easy to follow whatever your circumstances. Just fancied reading the cleaning book and obviously to support Anne. So I will leave a link to this book down in the description down below if it's of interest to you. And let's move on to the last two books. So these are ones that I got for Christmas. I'm gonna start with, I think the slightly heavier topic. This was a book that I requested. This is a book called The List. Firstly, loving the aesthetic, but very irrelevant to this. I think this is fiction, but is it based on something real? Verified couple, unverified rumors. Ola Alangide is a high profile journalist at Women Magazine, is marrying the love of her life in one month's time. Young, beautiful and successful, she and her fiance Michael Corentang are the couple goals of their social networks. As Michael has finally landed the job of his dreams, the pair truly seem to have it all. Until one morning when they both wake up to the same message, oh my god, have you seen the list? It begins as a list of anonymous allegations about abusive men circulating in secret to protect other women. Now it has been published online. Ola made her name breaking exactly this type of story. She would usually be the first to cover it, calling for the men to be fired, except today, Michael's name's on there. With their future on the line, Ola gives Michael an ultimatum to prove his innocence by their wedding day, but will the truth of what happened change everything for both of them? Compulsively page-turning, wildly entertaining, and piercing with fearless insight, The List is a sensational debut novel from an electric new voice in fiction, Yomi Adagok. I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong, but I am I mistaken that there is like some sort of online group or something that's similar to this. Either way, it's an interesting concept, so can't wait to get into that. It's definitely more of a, a darker themed book, I think. 
but let's get away from that and move on to something that's more wholesome. This was another Christmas present that I got and oh my god it's so beautiful. You guys may know by now that I love plants. I'm a plant mom. I have got so many in my kitchen and I nurture them. I love them. I get excited when they get new little leaves. This book here is called Plantopedia, the definitive guide to house plants and let me tell you it's a stunning book. You you can find any plant in here and it will tell you all of the care advice and as someone that likes interesting weird and new plants this will have everything in here and I have looked and I think most of my plants are in oh my god I I've just bought this plant this has been on my plant wish list this is a variegated Swiss cheese plant it's a special type with white splodges all over its leaves so I'm gonna keep this book open on this page because I would like to read this afterwards what a stunning book so there we have it those are all of the books here's a question that I would like to finish this video off on if you are an avid reader once you've read your books do you keep them or do you donate them I've started putting all of the ones that I have read into my guest room so that they can be read by guests or maybe borrowed but yeah I would love to know when you're finished with a book do you keep it or what do you do with it do you donate it give it to friends family or do you just put it back on the shelf let me know in a comment down below and hey if you have got this far in the video fussy thank you so much I hope you have enjoyed it maybe you are interested in some of these books let me know if you are let me know if there's any ones that you are excited about and you haven't read I will interact with you in the comments give this video a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it then I will maybe make more bookish videos like this in the future I've definitely made a few now you can go check out some of my older ones but I will see you next time thanks for watching guys Mwah. bye